Let us see about buck converter. Its operation, expression for output voltage, critical inductance and output voltage ripple. What is a DC-DC converter? DC-DC converter is actually a power electronic converter which converts a fixed DC voltage to a variable DC voltage. So if I give 100 volts, I can get some 50 volts or 150 volts also. I can, by changing this configuration, I can get a variable DC output with the fixed DC input. Basically, there are three types of DC-DC converter. One is called a buck converter which is called a step down converter because it produces a voltage less than the input voltage. Next is a boost converter which is a step up converter which produces output voltage greater than the supply voltage. And the third one is a buck boost converter which can produce a uh, higher output voltage or a lower output voltage depending upon the duty cycle. Apart from these three types, there are also other types like Cuck con Converter and Sepik Converter. So this is a basic DC-DC converter. When this switch is connected to the position 1, output voltage is equal to supply voltage. And when this switch is connected to position 2, output voltage is 0. So you see in this case, the ripple is very high. So this point is Vs and this is 0. So you cannot give this type of voltage to a practical circuit. So you need to use some filters so that this ripple will be reduced. Moreover, if I see the current waveform, in case of R load, I0 is equal to V0 by R and you see the current ripple is also high. So, you have to use some filter. So, normally we can use an LC filter to smoothen out the current ripple as well as a voltage ripple. And the switch in this converter will be turned on and off at a very high frequency. And this uh, D represents the duty cycle. That is the turn on time divided by the total time period T. And D value varies between 0 to 1. So T on I can write it as from here D is equal to T on by T. So T on I can write it as DT. So what is T of? So total time period is equal to T on plus T of. So here I can write it as T of is equal to T minus T on. So that is equal to T into 1 minus D. So hereafter for um, derivation of output voltage expression, we will be using this one only DT and 1 minus DT. So you remember these two things. So this is the buck converter with a filter. So the whole circuit is called a buck converter or step down converter. So when the switch is on, so this switch S yes, is on, the current flows through the inductance and the load. So the inductance will store the energy during this period and current, um, the inductor current actually gets divided into two parts IC and I0. So, I can write the voltage, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage expression for this one. Uh, Vs minus this inductance uh, voltage minus this load voltage is equal to 0. So, from that you find what is Vl. Okay. So, Vl is equal to Vs minus V0. Similarly, we can write the capacitor current equation. So, what is IL? IL, uh, right um, current equation at this junction, KCL, 
I L is equal to I C plus I naught. So I C is equal to I L minus I naught. Considering the off condition, we can see that the energy stored in the inductance will be delivered to the load during the off period and the current free wheels through the free wheeling diode. Writing down the equation, so this VL plus V0 is equal to 0, so VL is equal to minus V0. And if you take the capacitor current equation, it is same as the previous condition because same IL is getting divided into two parts IC and I0. Now let us draw the waveforms. First draw the voltage across the inductor waveform. So during on condition it is equal to Vs minus V0 and during off condition it is equal to minus V0. And if you see the IL waveform, during the on condition the inductance stores the energy. So the current increases with the positive slope. And during off condition, current, the inductor current decreases because the energy stored in the inductance is delivered to the load. So it increases during on condition and decreases during off condition. So on this I0 represents the average of this ripple value. And this is called del I, this is called the ripple. So the maximum value to the minimum value is called the ripple. And if you take the capacitor current, when this IL, when this IL is greater than I0, so this IL will supply I0 and the remaining current uh, is used to charge the capacitor. So when IL is greater than I0, capacitor will charge. Suppose this IL is uh, smaller value than this load requirement, this capacitor discharges to supply the load current. So this is the discharging period and this is the charging period. So whenever IL is greater than I0, the capacitor gets charged. So we have seen both on and off condition equation that is inductor voltage equation as well as capacitor current equation. Now we can find the expression for output voltage using these equations. So the next is voltage second balance equation that is in steady state always the uh, inductor voltage over a time period will be always zero because whatever energy stored will be released by the inductor. So this is represented by this voltage second balance equation. Here this second represents the time period. So we know the voltage during on condition as well as off condition we have already derived. Now this VL into turn on time plus this VL into turn off time equal to zero. So you substitute this value instead of Tn, T on we can write it as dt, T off is 1 minus T into T. So simplify this one, you will get V naught equal to D into Vs. This is the output voltage. So D is the duty cycle whose value varies from 0 to 1. So if I draw it as a graph between D and V naught, so it is a linear relationship. So if D is equal to 0.5, output will be 50 percentage. That is if my input is 100 volts, when D is 0.5, I will get 50 volts as output. And if D is 0.8, output will be 80 volts. So that is a, in case of buck converter, this is the output voltage expression. Similar to inductance, we can write the capacitor uh, for capacitor ampere second balance equation that is uh, with respect to capacitor current. So both are same. We will write uh, this current into turn on time plus this current into turn off time equal to zero. So simplify it, you will get IL is equal to I naught. That is 
the inductor current is equal to the load current. Next, we will find inductor current ripple. This one, you can find it for yes, on condition or off condition. Whichever is easy for you, you can do it. I have done for on condition. So, we know V0 is equal to D into Vs. And uh, on condition, you write the inductor current equation. What is VL? VL is nothing but L into Di by dt. <coughs> so, this VL, I can write it as L into Instead of di, I will write del il because that is the ripple I have taken it as del i and I have taken on period. So, I am writing as dt. If you take off period, write it as 1 minus d into t. That is equal to vs minus v0. So, you simplify this one. <coughs> so, in here while simplifying Instead of V0, I am writing D into Vs so that I will get the expression in Vs alone. Okay. In some books, they might have converted into V0 here. So, expression will be V0. So, do not get confused. You can write in anything V0 or Vs. Okay. If you replace V0 by dVs, you will get this expression. So, del IL is equal to this one. So, what you can find is del IL is indirectly proportional to inductance. So, when inductance is low here, ripple will be more. And if you want less ripple, you have to have more inductance. But more inductance will lead to high cost. And as cost increases and size of the inductance also increases. So, this is the inductor current. So, this you can see that the current is continuous. That is, it is always positive. So, the current is said to be continuous. But there is some condition. So, if you take this case where <coughs> the current just touches 0 and goes up again. So, at one point it touches 0 and goes up again. This condition is said to be the boundary between continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. If I slightly decrease the L, it will go to discontinuous mode. And if you slightly increase the L, it will go to continuous conduction mode. So, this is called boundary between continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. The next is uh, discontinuous conduction mode. You can see here the current becomes 0 here itself. That is during the off period itself it becomes 0. It is because the energy stored in inductance is not sufficient to supply the load during the total off period. So, if L is small you may get discontinuous conduction mode. So, in most of the buck converter application, we will be using continuous conduction mode only. But if you want discontinuous conduction mode, you can reduce the value of L. So, uh, this knowledge of L is important to design the buck converter. So, next is the critical inductance. So, it is the minimum value of inductance which helps to keep the a converter in continuous conduction mode. If you have a lower value of um, inductance, lower than this critical inductance, the converter will go to discontinuous mode. So, we should know the value of this critical inductance. So, let us derive it. So, Vl is equal to L into di by dt. So, L into instead of di, I can write del il into here I have taken off period because in off period it is equal to V0. You can take on period also. So, from that you find what is del IL. So, simplify it you will get this one. So, what is del IL? So, you take this equation because this is the boundary between continuous and discontinuous, discontinuous mode and this is total uh, ripple del IL. And this part is del IL by 2. So, this 
is del i l by 2 half of this is del i by 2 total is del i l half of is del i l by 2 so i will take del i by 2 is equal to what is this i naught so that is equal to i naught i naught is nothing but it is equal to v naught by r in case of a resistive load so v naught by r so now in i want uh, so i have del i l by 2 so i will divide by 2 here and here also i will get 2 so del i by 2 is equal to v naught by r so i am writing v naught by r now you equate these two equations so these two get cancelled from this you find what is l so l that value is called the critical value of inductance so that is independent of voltage that is 1 minus d into r by 2 into f where f represents the frequency or f is equal to 1 by t total time period t so this critical inductance depends upon the duty cycle load resistance as well as frequency so if you want to operate the converter in continuous conduction mode you should make this um, you, you should design the converter such that the l is greater than this l critical at least two to three times greater so that your converter will be in continuous conduction mode next we will see about the output voltage ripple so in output voltage ripple Capacitor helps to reduce the voltage ripple and um, the charge stored on the capacitor can be written as Q is equal to CV. That is the formula, uh, capacitor formula. So this is the area where the capacitor stores the charge because IL is greater than I0. So during that capacitor stores the charge. So what is del Q? Uh, you have to find the area of this triangle. What is the area of this triangle? Half into BH. So half into base. Base is this is the base of this triangle which is equal to T by 2. And height is del I by 2. That is equal to C into del V. So del IL we have derived in the previous case. So this is del IL by 2. So substitute that you will get what is the output voltage ripple. So the ripple depends upon L, C and F value. In addition, it also depends upon the duty cycle. So the points to remember here are, so buck converter is a step down converter. Its output voltage is equal to D time Vs and D varies between 0 and 1. And um, the critical ending, uh, inductance is the minimum inductance required to maintain continuous conduction mode of buck converter. And the formulas are given. So for study material, you can um, visit this website. And if you like the video, do subscribe to our electric vehicle channel. These are references.